The seats are cramped, the bathroom's the size of a closet, the turbulence is scary, and the food ranges from bland to sickening. But traveling via airplane is the safest and fastest way to get where you need to go. Straight from the mouths of ticket takers, flight attendants, navigators, and pilots, the hub's about to show you the biggest secrets the airline industry doesn't want you to know. And if you click the red subscribe button, the hub can't offer you any in-flight refreshments, but we can keep giving you the best content anywhere above sea level. Hidden Air Marshals An air marshal's main job is to make sure no threat makes it through the cockpit door, but sometimes they accidentally become a threat themselves like in April 2017 when an air marshal inadvertently left his loaded firearm in the bathroom. Aside from some unique situations, air marshals can efficiently maintain order just by people assuming one is stationed somewhere on their flight. While the flight crew knows whether the air marshal is sitting in a window or aisle seat and how they ordered their coffee, the rest of us passengers are kept in the dark. While it's ideal to have these law enforcers aboard during an emergency, they can't possibly make every flight. With 30,000 commercial trips taken by American planes every day, marshals are reserved only for journeys flagged as high risk by the crew. Factoring in the estimated 3,300 air marshals in America and subtracting those in grounded management positions, only half of a single percentage point of American flights get a marshal. In case you need to defend yourself at 30,000 feet, you might need to take matters into your own hands. But don't worry, statistically speaking, flying is still the safest way to travel. Cleanliness. Ever get a cold after a long flight? Maybe you're tired, maybe you were bound to get sick anyway, and the germs finally took your immune system down a peg or two. But most likely, you touched something on a plane that you shouldn't have. Oh sure, that armrest is meant for your elbow to lay on, and your hand needs to dig through the pocket on the back of the seat to pull out a magazine deeply nestled inside of it. Yet these spots are just two of many places in the plane that, like Moss Eisley's spaceport in the original Star Wars movie, are wretched hive of scum and villainy. And on your transatlantic flight, this scum and villainy is often highly contagious bacteria. But don't try and refund your ticket just yet, just be careful of where your appendages go and know that not everything is as clean as it seems. Blankets and pillows while wrapped in plastic are only cleaned in the first city of the day, with aircraft often bouncing to multiple different destinations in a single 24 hour period. Also, those new headphones aren't so new at all. Like every other in-flight accessory, the only thing new about them is the bag they're wrapped in. In-flight disasters. Unpredictable emergencies are every passenger's worst nightmare, and many of us can't help but imagine the worst case scenario before, during, and after takeoff. At least you can take solace in knowing that the airlines have considered all these nightmare situations too. Short of being grabbed out of the sky by the hand of Godzilla or hit by a poorly timed asteroid, nothing seems scarier than flying into dark storm clouds. Outside of major snowstorms or hurricanes, however, many flights often power through rough skies without a scrape to show for it. So why do airlines take such a risk? Is landing on time that important? Well, no, but we'll get to that later. Regardless, planes are built with a metal mesh overcoat to withstand lightning strikes. While movies may sensationalize an electric bolt blowing up an engine on a 747, airplane hulls can absorb the shock equaling a quarter ton of TNT. In fact, the light metallic hulls are built to allow some flexibility in the overall structure, keeping planes afloat in the turbulence brought by rough storms and heavy winds. Speaking of the environment, Recent studies show that air travel is worse than cars for global warming and could cause more dangerous turbulence as changing temperatures can make wind currents more erratic. Apparently, planes are their own worst enemy. Missing parts. You can't fly without engines, but there's a surprising number of equipment on board that might not be totally necessary to stay in the air. That sounds crazy, we know, but planes actually fly with a missing or broken part all the time. Don't freak out just yet. Each problem regarding the maintenance and upkeep of a commercial jet is noted in the logbook and reviewed by the chief mechanic prior to takeoff. If the plane's well-being isn't up to snuff, you'll remain grounded until all open issues are fixed. Something as simple as a broken windshield wiper can be an issue, but regulations in certain jurisdictions state that you only need an operational wiper if precipitation is expected within 5 miles of the airport. Another modern convenience, like air conditioning, not only keeps plane interiors at comfortable levels, but it's essential to keep oxygen at safe levels. If the AC fails, an auxiliary pack will keep the cabin pressurized as long as the craft stays below 30,000 feet. With two broken AC units, the plane needs to stay below 10,000 feet and always remain within 60 miles of a suitable airport. That height is less fuel efficient, but it keeps you breathing. Just hope no tall mountain ranges lie between you and your destination. Emergency landings. Like we said before, air travel is safer and faster than commuting by car, bus, or train. Keeping that in mind, we all still hope we'll never have to deal with any unforeseen disasters, but emergency landings are surprisingly more common than you'd think. 
During a period of review in New York City between February and June of 2011, there were 34 emergency landings at LaGuardia, 50 at Newark, and 66 at JFK International Airport. Part of the blame is chalked up to the stock standard commercial airliners getting up there in age. On average, America's jets are getting older, and there hasn't been any recent overhaul in their arsenal. While these landings are either due to a loss of cabin pressure, engine, or hydraulic failure, or smoke and sparks in the interior, none of them ended in disaster, and thankfully no one was seriously injured. Although this seems like a lot of issues to occur with planes taking off or landing, the sheer amount of planes flying through the airways on a daily basis makes for pretty slim chances of this happening to you. Also, if power were to cut out in the middle of a flight at 32,000 feet, you could still glide for 42 miles. Cheap Tickets Plane prices rise and fall at seemingly unpredictable rates. One day you're mulling over a ticket for a $100 flight home, and the next day the cost climbs to $1,000. What drives the price hike? Well, airline prices include separate industry-related fees because they can't make much money off your ticket alone. Due to FAA regulations, the aircraft needs to have at least 85% capacity for the airlines to make a profit from your tickets. Until then, they'll keep charging baggage and handling fees to at least make a couple of extra bucks. As for timing out your flight purchases, consider the standard schedule for airlines. The employees make a judgment call on the rates for each flight at the beginning of the week based on how much sales were made over the previous weekend. The following morning is when the airlines can compare deals to their competitors, and in a few hours' time, you'll find the cheapest prices you're going to find all week. This happens every Tuesday, so if you're planning on an upcoming trip, make sure you look for flights then. The prices reach their peak when Friday hits, and the amount sold over the weekend dictates where the rates will fall the following week. Finders Keepers If you see a suspicious or unattended package in your airport, you should report it to the proper authorities. Keep in mind, if it isn't dangerous and no customer claims it, that piece of luggage gathering dust in the lost and found bin may be a hot commodity among the airport staff. Some chatty NSA agents have some clean, stating that the booze they confiscate off passengers trying to sneak one past security are divvied up amongst the staff behind closed doors. In many cases, though, the more exclusive items that remain unclaimed after 90 days get auctioned off. JFK International Airport has multiple off-site warehouses around the New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut area, storing all misplaced goods. After thorough inspection by the Customs and Border Protection Agency, anybody is free to attend the public auctions and bid on standard leftovers like clothing, guitars, and even some more unique knickknacks like paper mache geckos and colorful iguana belts. These passengers were so worried about missing their flights, they either forgot to take all their belongings or they thought the airport was the perfect place to ditch unwanted heirlooms. A public airline auction seems like an interesting way to spend an afternoon. Secret Airport Hideaways Always in a coach passenger's line of sight is the thin curtain dividing their seat from those in first class. But beyond the cheaper price, are the amenities in first class really worth that much more than the seats in the rest of the cabin? For its high-end reputation, it usually isn't anywhere near as ritzy as some of the exclusive lounges hidden on the ground. In the airport terminals near you, frequent flyers and special club members are rewarded with special access. Singapore Airlines' private room has a hidden VIP driveway, with fine dining surrounded by orchids. LAX, the chosen airport for many Hollywood elites, has an entire terminal dedicated to celebrities and executives looking to travel in style at $3,500 per person. It allows the rich and famous to keep to themselves pre-flight. But even this one-on-one -on -one service doesn't compare to Etihad Airlines' residence lounge in Abu Dhabi. Here, customers enjoy the warm lighting and calm interior of a three-room penthouse suite, which offers a personal butler, private dining, and a selection of the finest liquors and cigars around. If you're willing to spring for these types of perks, you might as well just buy a private jet. Overbooking It seems like everyone knows the story of the guy who got kicked off his overbooked flight earlier in 2017. The injuries he sustained after being aggressively removed from his flight also severely hurt United Airlines' reputation. The only thing more shocking than this story is that this happens 40,000 times per year. Allowable by federal law, airlines overbook all their flights, and they have to in order to stay in business. With many passengers regularly missing connections, getting stuck in traffic, and being held by security, the airlines need to overbook to survive. Different airlines have their own algorithms deciding how many tickets to overbook per trip, and once a flight has more passengers than available seats, the airline has an unchecked amount of bonus miles or ticket savings they're allowed to offer to anyone willing to give up their spot. If you're removed from your flight against your will, the airline needs to get you to your destination on a different plane within one hour in order to avoid liability. Otherwise, they could owe you 200-400% to 400 of the ticket price depending on how long it takes to fly you home. 
plain doors. Every now and then, a crazy news story comes out scaring would-be flyers of the possibility that some unhinged passenger will try yanking the cabin door open. Who wants to have the cabin sucked free of its oxygen and any unbuckled people along with it? Thankfully, this type of situation is not really possible anymore due to the plane's pressurization. An average of six pounds per square inch of force is keeping that door closed. In addition to the electrical locking mechanism, after unlocking it mid-flight, you would need to muster a thousand pounds of strength to push it open. Passengers manage to get the doors open on older and less secure models, but this can't happen nowadays unless you have a cooperative pilot at the helm. Most famously, D.B. Cooper completed a mid-air heist, collected a $200,000 ransom, and parachuted away to safety in 1971. In that case, the pilot agreed to depressurize the cabin before the door was open. Since then, planes have been equipped with a D.B. Cooper switch in the cockpit, which fully locks the doors after the landing gear is retracted. The good news is, your flight's more likely to be impacted by the unhygienic bacteria or the bland food rather than sudden drops in cabin pressure. Thanks for flying with the hub and stay tuned. There's always more secrets for us to uncover, whether by land, sea, or air. We'll see you again soon.